All right, so in this uh, example, I'm going to show how to take a repeating section data and using the query XML action in Nintex workflow, how to extract the data, how to actually just kind of manipulate and get to it. So to look at this really quickly, I'll open up the form. Uh, it's a basic form, has a repeating section in it, has the flight date, ticket price, start, and destination airport, date, ticket price, start, and destination airport. That's it. If we look at that, that is storing this inside of a, this is a multi-line text field plain text, and it's storing it as XML. It's outputting it as XML. So we want to be able to extract that and do something with this data. How do we actually do that? So uh, really quickly, one of the easiest ways to do that, well, it's a couple different ways. Um, but let's see here. So the first thing you can do is if you want, you can go to a website like codebeautify.org, that's XML viewer. Um, so you can go there and you can just copy and paste that in. So I'll clear this out really quickly for you so you can see what that looks like from the beginning. So I'm going to basically paste this in. This is coming in from uh, the list. So just copy and paste that in. And then I hit tree view. So it then shows me this kind of uh interesting looking view of the data so that's the data there and you can tell it has given is given me the nodes etc um i hit beautify or format really quickly because it is xml so it just formatted it and i can now see that i do have data that i could now do something with or extract I'm like okay yeah but that's not inside of a, of a workflow so how do i do this inside of a workflow so way that you can do that is copy the same data again Open up Workflow Designer, and there is an action called Query XML if you're on Prim. Query XML action. Um, this will give you the ability to then do that. So I'll actually start a new one off, drag it in. Uh, quick way to test this is just to see what you have and what you're working with is a copy and paste to uh, here as raw data. This isn't how you would do it when you're running the workflow, but this is a way to do it to actually just kind of test and walk through how to actually use this thing. So once you have the XML in here, you click on XPath Builder, and this will now bring up a couple different things. You'll see the source again. So you have the source here. Look at that. It's already uh, giving you a format. Uh, you can look at a tree view and then see that it's giving you the data. But you notice that it's kind of doing something really interesting here. It's telling you the nodes. If you click on the node, you will then see that is giving you this, etc. So how do we actually utilize this? So the way to do this is quite simple. Say, for example, we want to actually get the starting airport for the first flight. Now, if we remember the starting airport for the first flight, open this up again, that it is Seattle or SEA, destination airport is ATL, and the ticket price is 1000 and the date is 1-9. So let's see if we can actually pull that same information. So we want to start airport. Uh, I'm going to do this and get start. So it gives me this node. I'm going to apply it. Now, this is for number two. So simply just change it over to number one. And now I have that. I'm going to, I can then store that. We can actually grab the inner XML, the outer XML. Those are different things. Just leave it as text. Uh, I'm going to keep doing this to show you because we can actually use a run down function on Prim to test that out. So I want to see do the same thing and I want to get the destination airport. Again, I understand it's giving me the two. I'm going to flip that to one. And then I want to also get the date just to see what that looks like. So item here, give me the flight date, apply it, give me the number one date there. And now we can just run that. So it's going to take our XML that we have here. It's going to use our X path and it's going to show us what the outputs will look like execute that really quickly so we can see output seattle atl and 1920 think that matches 192020 seattle atl looks like we actually have the right nodes set up which is good uh run that again so if you hit execute here you see that show up so now if we were let's just say we wanted to grab inner xml differently similar thing you're just changing that and now we're showing that as a different return results. Uh, let's see what the outer XML looks like. I think I need to change something for that, but maybe not. We'll see. Yep. So this is what it's going to do. It's going to give me the full string in case I want to do something different with that. 
That's what the outer XML will give you. So it gives you the full string plus the value of the text. So um, in many cases, you won't need any of that. So just go ahead and leave it on text and that will do that. Um, just another thing to show you, we could actually mix this up. I can get you the number two and if we have more than two lines of data in there, we can do that as well. And each item would have its own note number. Uh, so that is something to be aware of. So I can actually just flip this. So you see I'm not playing any games or showing anything different. ATL Seattle 116. Um, so really quick way to test and see if you have that done. And then if you want to actually run it live, you would just need to insert instead of the XML's raw data, you'll want to make sure you go to either the workflow variable that has the XML in it or reference the XML field itself, the, uh, the, X, the field that's storing the XML itself. And that will be... Um, you put that in there, make sure your nodes are in correctly here, and then when you actually run the action, I did not say that because I didn't set up any outputs. Um, store your outputs as variables. These variables need to be, uh, in this case, you can start. I'm going to do end or des des destination, and, that, and then I'll do date really quickly. And this needs to be date time and to that. So this would be start, destination, and then date. And so now that is actually set up. So when this runs and executes, it will store those values into the three different variables there. And then you can actually utilize that um, for what you need. So hopefully that works and answers your questions when it comes to how to actually extract the data out of a repeating section uh, once you have it stored in there.